morning and welcome to worship. Good morning. Special welcome to those of you who are visiting. It's a great joy to have you worship with us this morning. As we gather this morning, may the Spirit of the Lord work within us. As we gather, may we glorify the Lord. And as our hearts begin to worship, May we be blessed because we can. We begin our worship by singing together in 535.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together a great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by the brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us uh, say Psalm 126. Uh, alternately at the Asbest, please. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then will we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Like the water courses of the naked, those who have sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy and show them the seeds. Our second reading today is from the letter to the Hebrews. The former priests were many because they were pre prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, as he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day by day first for his own sins, and then for those of his people. This he did once for all, he offered himself. For the law appoints a high, uh, as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Many of you know that not all the gospel stories are the same. The word gospel means good news. And sometimes you have to wonder where the good news is. Not so with this story. This story is a good news story, a real good news story. And as I read it, it reminded me of another scripture, a verse, Romans 15 verse 4, which says this, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. I hope that hearing this story we just read, all of us who may be in situations that are challenging and difficult can gain hope. So I want to invite you to follow me as I try to gain some lessons for us that may apply to us and give us more hope so that at the end of this we can say with um, Bartimaeus that the Lord has done good things for us and we are glad indeed. The story begins by telling us that Jesus, his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. It doesn't tell us where they were going, but we know he was going to Jerusalem which is said to be about 18 miles away from Jericho. And Bartimaeus, this blind beggar, was sitting on the roadside. 
had found a strategic place to sit so that when Jesus comes by, he would not pass him. A roadside is a great place to sit when you are waiting for help, especially in those times. Unlike our times when people just cruise by in their cars, then they had to walk by you and you knew you could get some attention from at least a few, a few people. And sure enough, as he was sitting, he hears that Jesus is passing by. Jesus is passing by. And he had heard something about this Jesus. And I say that because I noticed what he asked for. He did not ask for money. He asked for something more than money. He had heard about this Jesus who gives more than money, who gives real life, who gives new life. So he cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I want to say something about being in the right place at the right time. This here is the right place at the right time. Even though Baltimaeus was blind, but he could hear clearly. And so he knew what was going on. But some people tried to discourage him as is always the case, once you sense that something is going to happen, that God is beginning to work in your life, that a breakthrough is almost coming, there will be people who will discourage you, who will tell you all oh, those things of religion and things like that. They try to stop him. Quiet. <laughs> I was thinking about this and I said, yeah, actually even today some people, even Christians, sometimes quiet people. I remember a story, <laughs> uh, Nicky Gambo um, of Holy Trinity Brompton likes to tell the story of a woman who uh, had somehow experienced God. And so she was not a churchgoer, so she decided to go to church. And as she listened to the sermon, she said, Hallelujah, Amen. She was like responding to the sermon. Then the church warden, in England, church wardens sometimes are like ushers, came to him and said, Woman, quiet. She said, I have religion, I am excited. She said, but you didn't get it here. <laughs> <laughs> so there, even in churches, there are people trying to silence people who are excited about Jesus. But no one could stop Bartimaeus. He was determined that this moment would not pass him by. The good news for Bartimaeus says that the more he cried out, Jesus had him. And we are told that Jesus stood still. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. I must give a benefit of a doubt to the people who are fighting, who are silencing Bartimaeus. Probably they were worried about the distance, the 18 miles they needed to walk. And they didn't want anybody who would delay the journey. So they probably had a legitimate reason. Whether it was legitimate or not, what we know is that Jesus had the time for Bartimaeus. He stood still because he had time for him. And the good news for us, the encouragement for us is that 
Jesus has time for us. Sometimes people tell me, well, I can't pray for myself because there are people in the worst situations and God has a lot to take care of. I usually say, you probably don't have enough time to pray, but God has enough time to listen, more than enough time to listen. And we know this from other stories, that Jesus sometimes would be going to attend to a particular situation, and then he meets other people in need, and he would stop. Sometimes it would seem too late. You remember the story of Lazarus. He was late four days, and Lazarus had died. So the sister said, Jesus, if you had been here, my, our bro my brother would not have died. But for Jesus, it was not too late. So he stopped. But the good news happened when he said, call him here. And somebody said a wonderful thing. Take heart. See, in the very crowd that was saying, keep quiet, there was at least one person, or more than one person, who understood the need that Bartimaeus had, who could see the desperation. And they said, take heart, he is calling you. And that is all Bartimaeus wanted to hear. Take heart, get up, he is calling you. Notice what he did. He threw away his clock. The clock, some say, is associated with his uh, old life. It was like his uniform, if you will. Some people associate the clock as something that was heavy, that was probably uh, hindering him. But I can see where the cloak as a form of uniform also makes sense. He was done with that life of begging. And as soon as he heard that Jesus was calling him, that is all he needed. That changed his life forever. I can understand the feeling because it happened to me I can't even remember the date, August 26, 1984, when I also heard the voice, somebody say, he is calling you. For me, it was somebody reading from the letter, the second letter to the Corinthians, and listen to what he said, when he read what I heard. And a little bit of background, I had spent at least two years praying for, delete, for a, a new life, for renewed life. I was living a life of contradiction. I didn't like my life, and I was overwhelmed with guilt and shame. I was miserable. And I had been praying that God would break open my heart and then uh, give me the strength to overcome this old life so I can live the new life in him. And so for me, this the, these were the words that changed my life. And this is what it says, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2, At an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. These words changed my life and I will never be the same. And I imagine that that's exactly what happened to Bartimaeus. Take heart. Get up. He is calling you. This is the moment you've been looking for, you've been longing for. He is calling you. He exchanged 
his life for a new life with Jesus. We read that as Bartimaeus approached Jesus, Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? This sounds interesting because we would imagine that Jesus knew exactly what Bartimaeus needs. And I say yes, he knows exactly what we all need, but he wants to hear it from us. He wants to hear it from you, in your mouth, with your mouth. Tell him what you want. For me, I wanted to be free from my old life. But Mass wanted to see. And I want to believe that he was more than seeing with physical sight, but to see as God sees. And listen to what Bartimaeus said. My teacher, let me see again. Not how he addresses Jesus. My teacher. He already believed in Jesus. He already knew that Jesus came to seek and save people like him my teacher, and he had already accepted Jesus in his heart. He had already accepted him as Lord and Savior of his life. My teacher, let me see again. How I pray that this will be our request, not just once, but always. That's why I like the many songs similar that talk about the desire to see. <clears throat> Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Many of you know some of those songs. And listen to what Jesus said. Go, your faith has been you. more than physical sight. Being well is a lot more than physical sight. It is transformation. Right relationship with self, with God, with other people, <coughs> with himself. All is well. Your faith has made you well. Being well Again, it's much more than regaining sight. Because you see, there are people who have sight but cannot see. And indeed, there are others who don't have physical sight, but they can see. I can actually say that Bartimaeus started seeing before he regained his sight. He had insight. He had man, he saw Jesus in a bigger way than many around him. You probably remember the, the, the arguments Jesus would have with some of the people who'd come to see him. When he said, once he said, You are blind, you have eyes, but don't see, he said, No, you are not blind. He said, I wish you were blind, then you wouldn't be blind. It is worse to have eyes, physical sight, but cannot see. But the mass did not just regain his sight. He saw Jesus, he encountered Jesus, and followed Jesus on the way. And that's beautiful. But once he was set free, once his life of begging, once his blindness was totally gone, he followed Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the light of the world. <laughs> Listen to what Jesus says in John 8 verse 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 
that's the difference it makes when you walk with Jesus. Whoever follows Jesus will never walk in darkness, but will have life, the light of life. The story of Bartimaeus is truly a good story, full of lessons, full of encouragement and hope. I pray that we will find encouragement in the fact that Jesus has time for us. For me, that's the biggest lesson, that Jesus has the time for us. If you cry out, he has time for you. We read from Romans 10 that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But more importantly, I pray that we will follow the example of Bartimaeus, who did not get discouraged by those who were silencing him, but rather kept pushing. And when he knew that the moment had come, when Jesus said, call him here, he left everything behind to follow Jesus, the light of the world. I'd like to conclude with a song. In some ways, one way or the other, we are like Bartimaeus. We have needs. Perhaps our need is not seeing, but we have many other needs. And I want us to pray this prayer in him 139 the in the lift every voice and sing him no him 139 pass me not O gentle Savior and I pray that we'll sing it uh, if you could help us uh, Sharon with that hymn uh, hymn 139 Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Let it be our prayer as we conclude this reflection. Let us start.
truly desire your touch. As you did not pass by Bartimaeus, how we pray that you will not pass by us. Yes, Lord. You know each one of us. We know what we need. And thank you that you have time to listen to each one of us. And so even now as we lift up our concerns to you, we thank you that you listen and you meet our need. How I pray that each one of us will leave this place made whole, made well. Thank you. We pray this in your most holy name. Amen. 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 With that, let us affirm our faith according to the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, entirely begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, through God from true God, begotten not made of one being of the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living of the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the prayers of the people. Our God wraps us round in love and embraces us with mercy. There is nothing we need hide. Let us bring our needs and the needs of the whole human family to God's loving care, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That your holy church, O God, may be filled with truth and love, and may be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O gracious God. Lord, hear our prayer. That church leaders everywhere, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Greg, our bishop, Samuel and Janice are priests, and all other ministers may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray to you, O gracious God, Lord, hear our prayer, that our church family, our clergy, vestry, staff, teachers, students, mission partners, and all members and friends may be filled with God's spirit and devote ourselves to loving and serving you with gladness and singleness of heart. We pray to you, O gracious God, Lord, hear our prayer, that our efforts to raise funds to support our school through the upcoming golf tournament will be successful and be a source of joy and blessing to us all. We pray to you, O gracious God, Lord, hear our prayer, that those in positions of public trust, especially Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, mayors of cities, members of Congress, judiciary and all in authority may have the wisdom to understand and discern what is right and to govern your people with equity and justice. We pray to you, O gracious God, Lord, hear our prayer. that all whose lives are in danger due to war and other man-made and natural disasters may be rescued from harm and given opportunities to safely rebuild their lives. We pray to you, O gracious God, Lord, hear our prayer. 
For all who are sick, especially Janet, Ron, Terry, Jane, Deborah, Dorothy, Perry, Liz, Cesar, Jean, Jeanette, Lee, Randy, Pat, Carol, those listed in our bulletin and others may be healed and restored to wholeness and strength. We pray to you, O gracious God, Lord, hear our prayer, that all who are involved in the global campaign against the COVID-19 pandemic may be united in mind and purpose as we each play our part to mitigate and bring an end to this pandemic. We pray to you, O gracious God, Lord, hear our prayer, that those who are celebrating their birthdays this week, especially Jerry and others, and those celebrating their anniversaries, especially Cherry and Ron, Deb and Sid, may continue to grow in wisdom and grace. We pray to you, O gracious God. Lord, hear our prayer. That we and all whose lives are linked to ours, our families, friends and neighbors, being protected and freed from anxiety, may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O gracious God. Lord, hear our prayer. At this point, our intercessions or thanksgiving may be offered either silently or aloud. God of promises, you have brought us a long way and have kept us safe on our journey to you. Hear us now and answer prayers we reply. Teach us to run to you for all we need. We ask this in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us also confess our own sins and the sins of those associated with us, sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what you have done and by what you have left We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. <laughs> welcome again to the house of the Lord. Special welcome to those of you who are visiting. It's a great joy to have you work with us. I recognize Father Bill and his family. Welcome again. I also noticed some new faces. Uh, I'm guessing because with masks you can't be sure whether you met somebody or not. But uh, we have a tradition here that when people visit us, we give them an opportunity to say hi if they wish to. So if you are visiting and you wish to say hi, tell us your name. Uh, it would be wonderful. Yes. I uh, moved on for from uh, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome again. Uh, it's a great joy to have you with us. I wish to call your attention to the announcements. Uh, one that is uh, uh, perhaps more significant is the, the golf tournament to raise funds for our school. Um, it's this coming Saturday. I am told that all is going well, but there's still room for more golfers and more donors. People can golf, but can't donate. Uh, there's enough room. 
I know gift is too large. I know <laughs> gift is too small. <laughs> no gift is too large or too small. Any gift is welcome. I think we have the most wonderful ministry uh, with the school, through the school. Uh, I am, as some of you know, I'm very shy, and uh, especially when it comes to ask people for money. But when it comes to a good cause, I drop my shyness. I, I, I am bold. In fact, I think I shared last week that when I went to buy uh, the, 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 the car that I'm driving now, uh, I saw at the dealership they had this sign. They had signs of um, uh, schools they had donated to. And I told my salesman, I said, we have a school too. We need, we need, we need a donation. And he said, talk to the manager. Unfortunately, the, the process went too long. I didn't have a, a chance to talk to the manager. But I went on Monday. Unfortunately, the manager was not there. Uh, I left the materials and I'm going to follow up tomorrow. So I am not shy. And I think if I can do it, you can do it too. You can tell your friends we have a wonderful ministry and uh, uh, you can join. It's open, it's free. You can join in any way you wish by giving a donation, by joining the tournament and playing golf. Uh, there are many ways you could and many others, tutoring, and the other things, there are many opportunities to be part of this great life-changing work. Any other announcement? Oh, I have another one. I want to thank all of you who uh, responded to our call to donate to disaster relief after those many disasters happened at the same time, the earthquakes in Haiti, the, the crisis in Afghanistan, the floods uh, in Louisiana and neighboring states, uh, you responded generously as always. And you contributed 4,125,000. Give yourself a clap. And uh, so, what we are doing with that money, some of it was designated, some of it undesignated. We, we are sending 1500 to the diocese which has established a Haiti fund, and they have identified somebody in the place that was most hit by the earthquakes in Haiti. Uh, who will, that money will help in the rebuilding. So we are sending 1500 to that. We are sending 1925 to ERD, Episcopal Relief and Development, and we are sending 700 to Episcopal Migration Ministries. And I believe the money will be well used. All those organizations are good. Uh, they, they have little overhead because they work with the grassroots churches, the people on the ground. Uh, I was giving an example that if there was a disaster in our area, Episcopal Relief would come and contact the three Episcopal churches here and then ask us what needs to be done and they would be working with us to respond. Uh, and with that, that really helps uh, make the, the donations we make uh, be most useful. Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for us, mm. an offering to God.
celebrate this Eucharist in thanksgiving to God for all the blessings of our lives, but also in intercession on our own behalf, on behalf of many who are struggling, that we too may encounter the power of God's love in Jesus Christ and be set free to follow Jesus with joy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let yeah, us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to your God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. At the supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctified them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your, of your Son, Jesus Christ, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, to the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now that our Savior Christ has told us, we are going to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.
let's preserve your body and soul. Amen. Who are joining us on Facebook, I invite you to join with me as we pray together the prayer for those who are unable to join us in person. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. I invite you now to join me in the post God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise to God. Hallelujah.